Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back to my channel. Um, I don't know if the face is going to stay. We'll see. This kind of creeps me out and I'm going to keep looking up at this camera to make sure I'm in frame. So I'm sorry. And I have coffee because it's been a morning. It's been a, it's been a morning. It's not even morning anymore and it still feels like it's not over. Mm -hmm. So anyway, as promised, I said we were going to use up some of our scraps today. So I got out a box of scraps and I'm just going to get some out. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, okay, so here we'll just start with, with these scraps. And it can be anything, book pages, um, sheet music, scrapbook paper, craft paper, what do I have in here, fabric, all kinds of things. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make what I call a scrap sampler. So find something that is probably the biggest piece. I think, I think these two are probably about the biggest. Okay. So start with, let me make sure I'm in frame here. Okay, so start with the biggest piece. Zoomy, zoomy. There we go. And then just start building on top of that. So take another piece, and this piece even has like little cutouts um, out of it. it. It doesn't matter. Just put that in, just put that in there. The only thing that we want to make sure is this top edge needs to be um, kind of straight. So everything is gonna line up to this top edge as much as possible. If you need like a binder clip to keep it clipped like this, and then you can just turn it sideways and then just keep adding your scraps of paper, okay? So here is, here is some fabric. Let's add some fabric in here. And it, it's kind of crooked, but it, it doesn't matter as long as it's going to be up in that area. Here is another piece of paper. It's kind of long, but we can trim that later. You can rip it off or you can, you can leave it. All right. Here's another piece. And just keep building. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that, this one's pretty, um, the thicker this is up at the top here, so the thicker this part is right here, um, the more difficult it will be later. And you're like, well, Nick, if you just tell us what we're making, we could make that distinction. Well, you'll get it here in a second. I'll show you. This won't take too long. There's another piece. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what this is all, all about here in just a second. It's hard to explain it until you just kind of kind of see it. Does that make sense? Um, here is some marbled paper. Um, here is just some regular uh, tea stained paper and I'm just going to fold this guy in half kind of, and shove that up in there, like, like so, and here's another piece, like that, let's see, let's see, what else, here's some ledger, should we throw some, le always throw a ledger in there, right, only always, that in there. Let's see, here's some craft paper. We can put this guy in here. I'm gonna rip this and make it a little more even on top. There we go, so there's that. Um, here's a piece of paper that was sewn on at one point my camera will cooperate and I'm just going to kind of fold that in half so it kind of fits put that in there 
Mm, I think we're getting to the point where it's going to start getting too thick. So I'm going to I'm going to be stopping here in just a moment. How about mm, maybe I'll just trim this off. This like this, and then maybe like this, just to kind of make it fit. Kind of, kind of, sorta. Keep messing with it. Just put it in there, Doc. Okay. So now that can go like that, and then I like to end with something. Um, a little in the smaller kind of range so something that's not huge maybe something that's been ripped um, or something and you're like yeah still don't know what we're doing Nick still don't know so I think I think that's gonna be it I think oh I do want to add this Oh yes, oh yes, that must be added. So let me add this one real quick. Okay, now I'm done, maybe. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. So now that we have all of this pretty much kind of evened up, you can turn it over and you can see that, that base uh, piece that we put down first. You can, at this point, cut around that and make it all nice and even and make everything kind of match up with that base thing or you don't have to um, this there's no rules here so but if you want to just like do this there we go and just kind of kind of make it conform ooh conformity all right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab like uh, something that's going to become a, oh, my eyes are itchy today. Um, where's my, oh, there's some. Um, something that's going to be kind of like a cover. So like this is a piece of leftover file folder. And um, I want something that's going to create like a little, kind of like a notebook cover. Sabe? So what I'm going to do is kind of, you know how the, the, the folders have these little scored, can you guys see that? Sorry, if I do it this way, maybe you can see it. Um, how they have these little scored areas. Um, I think I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use one of, one of those. So I'm going to want to, if I'm not going to use a file folder that has like a scored spine in it, um, if I'm just going to use like a plain piece of craft paper or something, you might want to score um, a little quarter inch spot just to kind of wrap around this. Because see how, see how this is kind of not quite a quarter inch, but it's, it's pretty hefty up in there. Um, so I just have like a little quarter inch space here that that will accommodate the top of this little spine area so I'm just gonna lay that in there like such and so forth and I'm gonna give myself about a sixteenth of an inch space all around so that the cover covers <laughs> and now I'm gonna take this over to the um, the doomy flobber over here, my cutter, and I'm gonna cut this down to what I just marked it at. I like such and so forth. And there we go. We have we have this piece that's going to be kind of kind of the right size. So now we have to take the binder clip off and carefully put this in here like this like that 
And then you can close it up. And when you close it up, you can you can kind of uh, you know tap it so that it goes all the way down to the to the top of the the book there. This our little spine area. You see how it's? Let's see if I can get the camera to pick this up. See all the papers are you know kind of down in there. Okay, now. Okay, so now you can do a couple of things. You can staple across here if you would like. Um, you can punch holes and do like a three hole binder stitch. Um, I, I mean, there's, there's like endless possibilities at this point. I'm gonna flip it over because I like the other side of the, of the file folder a little bit better. Because this side has part of Office Max on it, which is fine. I'm just gonna flip it over. Okay, so what am I gonna do? Um, I think I will grab my crocodile. And I'm gonna put it on the 1 8 punch. And you can also do this with, you know, with a pokey tool. Um, I'm just gonna do it with this because I'm kind of lazy. So I'm gonna mark my my middle-ish and one over here and one over here just to kind of, of course that is so not even. That was like, like not even, not even, even. All right, so I'm gonna punch these holes. And make sure all your papers are up in that spot. Because if they're not, then when you punch these holes, it won't go through anything and it won't hold anything. And then, you know, then that's worthless. Make sure that one's punched all the way through. All right. So there is our three holes, still not even. Still not even. Mm -mm. And I'm going to grab some of this. Um, Baker's twine. What color do I want to use? Just black. How about black? We will use black. And I'm just going to cut off a little piece. And now oh, comes the hard part. Might need, might need a pokey tool. So I'm going to start from whatever's going to be the front of my my little book here and I'm going to feed the thread, the twine, in through that middle hole. Mm -hmm. And I, you can thread a needle if you wanted to thread a needle, you could do that. It kind of reeks of effort so I, I don't want to. And now from that middle hole Turn it to the back and you'll either go in the bottom or the top or the left or the right, however you want to look at it. I might even in frame here. this way like this I'll turn that end off oh my goodness it's getting all raggedy now it goes in the other hole on the front all the way across and in this guy the other the the hole that hasn't been used yet pull that through and then it goes back through that middle hole back to where we started from. And this is the super fiddly bit. Because it's not going to want to. Just 
is why it's probably a great idea to thread a needle if at all possible if at all possible oh my goodness stay just stay this is my life this morning it's like everything is fighting me okay so now we have our two tails make sure one of the tails is on one side of this front you know straight stretch here and then the other tail is on the other side and I want you to pull the tails gently to make sure that um, that this is all nice and snug don't pull too hard or it will rip your paper so just be careful and then just tie a knot you can you can trim these if you want you can put knots in them you can not put knots in them <laughs> Um, that part is up to you. So what we have now, um, as you can see, is a little sampler book of scraps. And what these are good for is um, using them in art journaling or collaging or junk journaling, all kinds of things, right? So we're always reaching for scraps and, you know, Sometimes it's a whole shoe box, right? Um, so this is kind of a nice way to have something sitting on your desk that doesn't quite look like you're a hoarder. It doesn't quite look like you're keeping trash because <laughs> um, nobody's gonna throw a little notebook away, right? So anyway, it's nice to have on your desk. And then another thing you could do is you could do a swap with somebody or several buddies. And wouldn't that be cool? Like everybody makes up some of these like little sampler uh, books and then you can send them off to your friends and then all those friends send you their sampler books and then you've got all kinds of paper to play with. And sometimes you don't need a lot of paper, you just need scraps of things. And you can make these sampler books as big or as small as you would like. You could even go pretty good size if you wanted and use bigger pieces of paper if you wanted. Um, they don't even have to be scraps. Um, you can even use even larger size pages that haven't even been, been ripped off yet and bind them the same way. Um, make a book full of you know sampler paper that you're gonna be sharing Maybe it's paper that you don't use a whole lot of, or maybe you've used it. You know how after a while then you're done, like you want to move on. Um, this is a good way to share and to, um, you know, kind of pass the love around. Use up your scraps, use up the, the papers that perhaps you're not going to be using anyway, and get them out of your face. And then it gives you, um, it gives you another reason to buy more paper you know, whatever helps you sleep at night, right? <laughs> so at my Flickr, which is gonna be way, way, way down there now, cause I'm way up here, um, I'm gonna have some little labels that you can print out and you can decorate your cover and it will have like a from and a to. So if you're gonna be sharing with folks you can put your name and who it's to. You can put little, little, uh, there it goes, scrap sampler labels. This is like a Denison type label, a little storage label here. You can even write the date if you wanted to. And then you can have this cute little thing that you can send off and it's kind of like a little present and very inexpensive to send something like this in the mail as opposed to, you know, something heavier, right? So let's put that scrap sampler right like that. Here is a from and a to. So let's put one of these on here just to, just to do it. So maybe that'll be over here like that. You could get out your stamps and you can start stamping stuff if you wanted to. Um, there's all kinds of things. I mean, you guys are, you know, junk journalers. You, you know what to do. I'm preaching to the choir here, right? So I'm just going to put that there and then open it up and fold it across like that. 
So let's say you have some smaller pieces of paper that you put in here that didn't get punched by the holes. Maybe they're a little bit loose. Um, one thing you can do as you're binding these little things or stacking these little papers together, um, just take some, some glue and have that ready. And if you tack, like I bet like this one's, yeah, so this one's loose. But had I taken a little bit of glue, just a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit, and just dotted that there and tacked it to the larger piece behind it, now it won't go anywhere because that larger piece is bound. You know, it's got a hole through it and it's been, you know, tied into, into the binding. So just kind of maybe keep that in mind. I guess I should have said that ahead of time, but problem solved, crisis averted. And more caffeine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here are a couple more that I made that I will show you. This one pretty much looks exactly the same as this one. It's just a little bit smaller. Your, um, your book will be, um, the cover will be dictated by how big uh, the paper scraps you put in the middle. And then this one was pretty darn big. Look at all those papers in there. And what I did on this one, instead of just tying through the top, I used another scrap. Of course, I don't have one at the moment. Hang on. Oh well, you guys will get the hint. I used another scrap and before I punched holes, I glued on a, a scrap and I wrapped it around the top just to give it a little bit extra um, cuteness. You know, a little bit extra texture and stuff. And that's another thing you can keep, you can keep collaging all on these things. You know, it's whatever, it's whatever floats your boat. You can add a little tag if you want. You want to add a little tag. Now I'm making this really complicated, yeah, and it doesn't need to be complicated. It really doesn't need to be complicated. I just, this is what I do, man. I just complicate things. So you can add little tags to your, to the top. Um, of course, I didn't tie it on, so I'm going to cut a little diagonal snip. You can see after I punch the hole, you see the little diagonal slip, and then you can just put a little piece of tape over that if you wanted to. But anyway, you, you don't have to do that. It's not necessary. You can have, add all kinds of things to these. But anyway, um, I hope you guys like this idea. I hope you make some scrap sampler books and you can share with your friends, especially those, those folks that maybe are across the country or across the world or even across the state and uh, you wanna share some things with them and this is a good way to do it. And it's a good way to use up your scraps. Good way. All right, kids. Um, thank you so much for joining me today and looking at the face. Um, like I said, I'm not sure if this is going to stay. Um, we'll see. And um, I'm glad, glad you guys like the, the, the new room. Some of you said it's too clean. Well, I've only been in here a couple of days. Just give me a minute. Just give me a minute. There hasn't been a major project in here yet. I just, you know, I mean, the counters are just now dry. So you got to give me a minute. I will mess it up. I will mess it up. I'm one of those people that when I am like in a, I call it a creative frenzy. Um, everything is out everywhere and there's a mess everywhere. And then once that project is done, then everything has to be cleaned up and everything has to be put away before I start again because um, the chaos, um, if there's too much chaos and clutter, I can't think straight. So it has to be cleaned up before I start something else again. I will wreck the room, wreck it over and over again, but it has to be cleaned up in between times. That's just how I roll. I can't help it. But. So the little explanation, little, little thought process into the squirrels there. So, all right, guys, um, don't forget um, this guy with the little um, bag. Of course, I'm showing you in the tiny little thing. This thing with the bag will be going up for sale um, today, later on today. I think I put, what did I put? I don't even remember. I will look at that other video and 
see what I put on there and then put it below this video because I forget what what time I put and I have forgotten to show you in that last video that inside the collection envelope is a piece of wool felt and a little um, a little ziplock type baggie for collection purposes so that that's all that's in here and your scissors are in the art box so yeah oh and several people asked um, about about the art box and just to clarify that is part of the um, booksmith traveling journal kit class um, at teachable and also that link is below the video if you want to check that out okay I think that's it I think that is it for um, for today probably for this week um, I like I said I'm still working on those two courses that are coming up and um, maybe three courses we'll see and um, and the journals that I'm working on as well so I have to put all this away and make a new mess so maybe I'll share some pictures on Instagram or something of the messes that I make to show you that I am capable of trashing a room I really am all right guys thank you so much for joining me today and I will see you really really soon in the next video bye guys